Hello everyone! My name is Uzanna and I'm a harpist and a harp teacher and this is my weekly series Coffee Break Harp. Today I'm going to talk about Alexander technique as a way to reduce tension and pain while playing the harp. I will also show you one simple thing that you can do to get started, even if you've got as little as 5 minutes a day. As always, there is a free PDF that you can download for this episode. If you click the link in the description of this video below and leave your email, you will get access to this and all other resources, as well as notifications about future episodes. And now, let's dive in. Today's topic was suggested by several different viewers who wanted to hear some more advice on reducing tension and keeping body physically relaxed while playing. So I decided to talk today about my experience with Alexander Technique and how it helped me. One very important disclaimer, I am not a doctor and I am not a certified Alexander Technique coach. This general information is not intended to diagnose any medical condition or to replace your health practitioner. So always make sure to see your doctor and consult them before you start any sort of exercise or treatment plan. And definitely make sure to see your GP if you're in any sort of pain. Okay, important things out of the way. First, let me talk a little bit about my own experience. I started playing the harp relatively late. I was 15 years old and I played the piano. But I have to admit that in all honesty, I didn't practice very regularly when I used to play the piano. So that may be one of the reasons why I only started experiencing injury when I moved on to playing the harp. However, I can't tell for sure. The first time I noticed something being amiss was in the summer after my first year of playing the harp, when I was diagnosed with a ganglion in my right wrist, right here. I underwent two procedures to have it removed, with the second one being more successful. And a few years later, when I was in the college, there was a brief suspicion that it might be coming back, but luckily it went away and there were no more signs since then. Another problem I started experiencing later in the college was inflammation-like pain in my thumb and wrist area. These were the early days of the internet, I'm talking here years 2007 to 2010, but I was already browsing a lot of online forums for musicians and especially injured musicians. A lot of users were mentioning Alexander Technique and how they found it helpful. However, there was no Alexander Technique teacher anywhere near me that I could contact and go to for some advice. At the time, I studied at the Academy of Music in Katowice and we were incredibly lucky to have had a visit from Professor Imogen Barford from Guildhall School of Music and Drama in London. Although I don't think that at that time I knew about Imogen training to become Alexander Technique teacher, the way she talked about managing one's body while playing the harp made me realize almost instantly that this was what I needed to learn more about. So I decided to apply to study at the Guildhall School and I spent the next two years studying harp with Imogen. During my time at the Guildhall I was also incredibly lucky to have bi-weekly classes every second week with Alexander Technique teacher there, Selma Gokken. While I didn't know exactly what to expect from my first Alexander Technique lesson, I had a feeling that I would be asked to bring a harp with me, because after all I play the harp and harp was the source of problems, so definitely the teacher would want to see me with the harp for the first class. That was not the case. What I later learned about the tension is that while playing the harp could be the source of pain, it is rarely the only source of tension in our lives. Very often we learn really early on to habitually tense our body in response to stressful events. This can start with something as simple as tensing our neck and shoulders in response to a sudden noise. And then later we unconsciously repeat this pattern when we don't really need it anymore. We can, for example, tense up our neck and shoulders more than we need when we're performing day-to-day -day activities such as brushing our teeth, chopping vegetables, standing up, sitting down, all things like that. This is why Alexander Technique can be extremely helpful even if you're not a musician. It will still help you unlearn the unconscious habits that could potentially cause pain in the later life that started very early on, even before you picked up the instrument for the first time. Like with anything, you will get best results if you work closely with a qualified Alexander Technique teacher, seeing them at least every week and working every day on the homework that they assign to you. 
I'm going to share with you for the purpose of this video the very first piece of homework that I was assigned, that I kept working on throughout my studies at the Guildhall and that I still keep coming back to every day, especially when I'm facing a lot of practice or a potentially stressful performance, or even when I don't play the harp but I just feel the need to become a bit more grounded and relaxed in my body. For my first Alexander Technique homework I was supposed to lie down on my back every day for at least 20 minutes. I think I can hear some of you laughing. Um, what kind of homework is that? <laughs> Stay with me please, this does matter. This position is known under a few different names, among others constructive rest, active rest or simply Alexander lying position. Lying like this is a good neutral position to allow your spine to release with gravity and give yourself the opportunity to become aware of muscle tension and allow yourself to release it. How to practice a constructive rest? Start with preparing the space. During an Alexander Technique lesson you would probably lie on a special table which would be a bit similar to a massage table, but when you're at home you can easily create the space that you need on the floor. I usually place my yoga mat on the floor first, you can also fold a big blanket. When I was a student I used a big harp cover, but you need to make sure that it is as flat and firm as possible. The space you lie on needs to be firm, which is why lying on a bed or a sofa is not ideal. Next, gather a book or two. If you try standing with the back of your heels against the wall and your back against the wall, you will see that your head sits forwards of the wall. Roughly measure from the wall to your head and use this thickness to decide how many books you will need under your head when lying down. Everyone is different, so you may want to experiment with different book sizes. Some days you might need more, some days fewer. Then lie on your back and place a book or two under your head. The reason behind using a book rather than a cushion is that with a soft base it may be harder for your neck muscles to fully release as your head may not feel fully supported by a cushion. Your knees are bent and separate while your feet rest flat on the floor. Your hands rest on your hips, your eyes remain open. While you're lying down, observe what happens. You may start feeling how your body releases towards the floor. Let your neck soften as your body lengthens and widens. You are not trying to achieve anything. In fact, you want to do as little as possible. While you're lying down, don't use your phone or read books. Certainly don't watch TV or put hands under your head. Also, make sure not to raise your head if someone happens to bother you. I usually spend between 10 and 20 minutes in this position, sometimes doing this several times a day, but even 3 minutes can be very useful. I usually do not time it and certainly do not put an alarm on. Hearing the sound of alarm can trigger the unhelpful habits which your body has learned in reaction to a stressful situation, so if you need to use the clock, have one that you can easily see without changing your body position. My teacher used to say that the one thing you definitely shouldn't think of while getting up is getting up. So when you decide that it is time to move on to another activity, first pause and imagine, as my teacher said, putting that thought outside the door, outside the building, or possibly even further, beyond your street, beyond the town. You get the idea. Then, when getting up, start with rolling your eyes, head and knees to one side, taking plenty of time to do that. Then use the opposite hand to support your body while getting up and being very gentle with your head, let it be the last element of your body getting up. From there you can go onto all fours, then bring your toes under, gently roll back and stand, bringing your head up at the very end. I usually use this position as a way to take break from my practice, especially when I practice a lot. I would put a timer on at the start of my practice. 
The more I practiced, the more frequent would be my breaks, and often I would lie down after playing for just 20 minutes. You can use this Alexander lying down position as something you do during the day or as a way to take a break from your practice. As with everything, the more often you do it and the more regular it is, the sooner you will notice the effects. It took me a good few months of practicing this under the guidance of a teacher to start noticing progress between the Alexander Technique lessons. And slowly I realized how much of habitual tension I held in my body. It was quite a shock to realize that I was so tense and so used to being tense that I didn't even feel it. I cannot recommend Alexander Technique highly enough. It made a tremendous difference to my playing and to the way I feel when I'm playing and also away from the heart because earlier there used to be many times when I was in so much pain that I couldn't even think about playing. If you're interested in finding out more about Alexander Technique, I suggest you try searching for a teacher in your area. I will include some links in the description of this video to books and Alexander Technique associations to make your search easier. As always, you will get best results working on a one-to-one -one basis with a qualified Alexander Technique teacher, but I hope that this short video will be a helpful start on your journey to feeling better when playing the harp. I just need to make people see my face a bit. Oh, it's not working. What is it? What do you want? Do you want me to come there? What? The ding dong? What? You were saying that one of the birds. Ah, and then they are really loud. No, because there, there are birds in the music. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> and you will find the link in the description under this video. When you leave the email, when you leave your email. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, quick, 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 quick. You know it's a recording. Ah, perfect for you. <laughs> for my bloopers, perfect.